Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, uh, where today I want to talk about the last hurrah of music television when there was still music in it. And this was also in many ways the last hurrah of the record industry. It was it a very it was at a time that seemed very calm and a time when pop culture almost seemed banal, but there were some really interesting things happening as well. And this was the late 90s. I'm speaking specifically about the 1998 debut of Total Request Live, what in many ways was the final music-centric show that was really successful on MTV. Now, this was a time when South Park was very new, King of the Hill was very new, comedy was in a real healthy state. No one was really trying to censor comedy. Even with music, the, the PMRC had kind of died down after the censorship crusade of the 80s and early 90s, and everything seemed kind of calm. There were even two very tall and beautiful buildings in downtown Manhattan. And just up the road uh, in Times Square, uh, TRL, Total Request Live, made its debut. And it was quintessentially late 90s. It was that time when the digital world had arrived, but the analog world hadn't fully gone away. In the early episodes, big cathode ray tube televisions were throughout the studio, showing the young audience the videos, although in subsequent seasons, flat screens would be in, albeit in their uh semi-embryonic stage. Carson Daly as a host was someone who was very affable, still is, but he was very young at the time. In the first episode, this isn't obviously the first, but uh, he was very young. He didn't look much older than the teens who were in the audience. And the whole idea is that you could use something called a phone, mm, scary, uh, to request the videos that you wanted played. Um, and he would count them down. And it became a hugely influential show. So much so that not only was it in many ways the place that propelled the stardom of people who were then young artists, people like Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Jennifer Lopez, uh, the Backstreet Boys, in Sync, and a host of other boy bands at the time, but it also became so big that legacy artists like Prince and like Michael Jackson appeared on the show, which really showed that it was a place where it was where young fans, including there was still rock on MTV, things like Limp Bizkit and Korn, very popular, Metallica got their videos on. So it was really a mix of danceable pop music, new metal, some legacy artists, like again, Metallica, who were still, well, they were, they had been around for a while by then, as had Prince and Michael Jackson. And it was a place where all of these artists could mingle with the fans and a very affable host while waving to a, an audience on the street watching from a jumbotron in Times Square. It was a very fun show. And it represented the last hurrah of MTV because when the show started to lose popularity as we get further into the early 2000s, it was cancelled in I think 07. By then, MTV was really more about youth culture rather than music culture per se. And now it's been replaced by TikTok. The TRL of the 90s and very early 2000s had that kind of influence that TikTok had today. But because it was top down, where at least some of the stuff on TikTok and other areas of social media, <laughs> like this channel, uh, is bottom up, not um, created or promoted by corporations, there was still something that was from the old world about uh, this show. Again, it was that transition. That the interactivity of the digital and online world was coming in, but it was corporate. It was something everyone watched in a certain age demographic. In other words, people weren't as cloistered and segmented as they are now when you've got, oh, I only like this kind of artist or this kind of artist, and I've got a nice sweet algorithm that will tell you which one uh, is similar to the one that I already know. So it was that interesting transition period. And the music was in a transition period too. The late 90s and early, very early 2000s was the most lucrative period in the history of the music industry. But that was about to come tumbling down because while the bean counters were counting the dough, um, something called Napster had debuted at a very similar time to this show. 
And we all know what that means. In fact, I've made previous videos about it and I will release more about that. So again, this was in many ways, it, it ushered in a new era in music, but it was also kind of the last hurrah of the old era. And because of that, I think it was a very, it was a show that was obviously very influential in its day. No one can deny that. But I would say that its legacy is actually very important because just as some generations had Casey Kasem and Dick Clark and for more sort of less poppy music, things like Don Kirshner's rock show, the Midnight Special, the old Grey Whistle Test, Beat Club, Music Ladin, all of these different shows in various markets of the world. Um, in many ways, TRL brought that era to a close because after that, it became increasingly about MySpace which came a few years later, then Facebook, then Spotify and App Apple Music and Spotify, and then YouTube and then TikTok. And that is kind of where we are now. So um, a salute to Carson Daly who, for being the last of the MTV Mohicans, if you will, and to all of those artists, profound and not so profound, who made their waves on that show. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.